Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. This is part two of the MIG welding and aluminum fixture using the Lincoln Power MIG 350MP and using a strong hand table. I am also working on part two of building this boom arm that's going to let me hang a wire feeder on the end and give me quite a range to get around the shop and make things more efficient, more convenient. But I've ordered some parts and they're not here yet, so we're kind of on hold on the MIG wire feeder boom arm and uh, so this is part two of the aluminum fixture so let's recap on what we did on part one here started off with these base plates that um, then we tried to put them kind of put them all together to figure out what the access was going to be and the sequence was going to be and clamped them down flat to the strong hand table that wasn't enough so I wound up having to clamp both pieces there are two fixtures and I clamped both base plates together against each other where the heat and stresses and everything would kind of be opposing one another. So hopefully those base plates would come out flat when I was done. Because there's an awful lot of welding on these things to be just uh, welding one side and not having anything, you know, opposing and holding against the stress. Shrinkage stress of metal is a strong stress, so you gotta you got to work against it. So I've got this thing clamped against each other, all clamped together and tons of tack welds on it. And so I'm going to weld out each one with, with them tack welded together. And when I'm done, hopefully it will come out flat. All the while trying to work and tweak and, and uh, adjust the settings on this Power MIG 350 MP. Getting a little bit better and better as I go. I wish I had time to uh, really dial it in, but, you know, had to get this part done. So I had to preheat that thing up and stress relieve it and get it up to 350 before I cut these tacks loose and ground them down and everything. And once I ground them down and busted it loose, it, it didn't have a whole lot of stress left in it. So it really worked. Heating it up to 350 really worked and relaxed it and uh, made them come out flat. Now the settings I used are basically uh, about 584 on the wire feed speed, roughly 25 volts. Just straight up GMAW with no pulse. I experimented with pulse also, but for this thick of metal, just using straight up uh, straight spray transfer is a pretty good choice. Now the strong hand table here lets you do little jobs like this like nothing flat. Let's you square things up because you've got all those square indexed holes and the fixturing package lets you put little L brackets and things and, and you can you can get something 90 degrees square flat you can fixture you can make up a little mock-up fixturing station in, in uh, no time at all so it's very very efficient. Here I'm welding the outside of that piece. It's got a pretty good little V-groove on it. And the reason I'm welding the outside first is because the inside will always pull more than the outside. So I know that if I weld the outside, it's going to go ahead and pull, but that inside is going to pull even more. And usually that sequence will let things come back to being pretty flat. See, that pin is loosey-goosey again like it should be. And so it worked out really well. Now it's time to tack weld the big solid three and a half inch solid pieces on there, the shaft that's going to go inside that tube. So I, I laid out a box, but now I'm just kind of double checking it with the square before I get four tacks on it. And I'll just hold it with one hand and get four tacks really quickly. Everything is really precision cut, so as long as I have it flat, I, I know it's going to be square if everything's kind of uh, held down tight. Now this weld symbol on this joint called for about a half inch fillet weld and I really can't get that feasibly with one pass so it's going to be a multi-pass weld. So I'll just go ahead and put a you know normal size uh, 3 sixteenths or quarter inch fillet weld in there and stack two more beads on top of it like this to get the uh, required weld size. And when you're trying to film stuff and stopping and starting it looks like that. <laughs> Nothing to write home about but it is a sound weld. And again, using the strong hand tooling stuff, you can see how quickly it is to clamp stuff down because of all the holes in the table. I can throw something up there, one hand, clamp it down, which is very important to me because I'm always working by myself. Being able to use one hand and, and uh, you know to, to, to clamp with is pretty huge for me. So these are little spacer ears that go on these arms. 
And I'm just kind of welding them in quarters because um, that's about as far as I can go around comfortably. After getting a couple of tacks on them, I'll just, you know, quarter them up, weld them up, and I'll only show you one of them here. There's no point in, in you having to endure welding all, all four of them for two different fixtures. Now you can see these, uh, these spacer plates have little notches on them, so this really is kind of like a puzzle. This is all water jet cut, and it's gravy work. Just putting it together like this. I'm, I'm, I've got some makeshift pins, some three-quarter inch tubing, and, and the other big pin that go in there to kind of make sure it all lines up, because that's the main thing. No matter how it's squared up, the main thing is all the bolts and pins fit in correctly. And these little spacers are just plug welded when all that is uh, set and, and lined up. But for right now, I just want to get tack welds on those places where they're supposed to be plug welded because I don't want to have to go in and grind that weld out if, if something doesn't fit. So I'll get plenty of tack welds on, the, on, the, on those little spacer plate plug weld things. Again, just being able to, with one hand, clamp, clamp everything down tight. And it's designed where that is supposed to fit, but again, uh, I've seen a lot of mistakes on drawings and so it warrants just tack welding for right now and then I'll make sure that the wheels that are specced out to go in there fit before I do any complete final welding. So that's what they kinda look like without the uh, the arms welded on yet. Next thing, looks like everything's cool. We checked and the wheels fit in there. So now it's time to weld a little arms on there where the uh, hydraulic cylinder attaches. And again, very easily I can put a spacer under there hold that down in place with one hand and then put another clamp on this to lock it in place one hand and ready to tack weld again. I get a couple of pretty decent sized tack welds and I'll flip it over and do the other side. Now that quick clamp there has a little V-pad on it that helps in, in holding down round parts like that. A normal swivel foot works okay, but the V-pad works really well. A little quick check on here. The main thing, again, is that pin is lined up, but I still want to check and make sure everything's pretty close, and I want to check that spread to make sure it's good for the hydraulic cylinder to fit in there before I go too far. Again, I get a couple couple more tack welds and then leaving the pin in there weld that first groove weld it's grooved out about three-eighths of an inch weld it up and like I said I know it's gonna pull outward to an extent and you can see right here the pin is now locked tight won't move it was loose but when I weld those insides it's going I know it's gonna pull in quite a bit so I'm thinking that when I get finished welding those inside fillet welds, especially since they're grooved out as well, that um, it'll pull in enough to loosen that pin up and it'll float freely again. That's the goal anyway. There's always certain main things when you're welding up a, a fabrication like this and you know the pins being able to fit in there and not bind up is one of the main things. So there you go. Nice and loose again. So every now and then you 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 get a win welding these plug welds up because I checked the wheels and they all fit in there and that is what the finished product looked like all painted up nice Lincoln red coincidentally <laughs> and that big old hydraulic cylinder in place and that's gonna raise and lower some type of big round part uh, that's gonna be worked on don't really know all the details don't really want to know and uh, can't really divulge all the details even if I did know so that's the finished part pretty much ready for delivery we'll put the other one together and get her done alright well thanks for watching go visit weldingtipsandtricks.com or welding-tv.com